Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thank you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos. If you're here for a second or third or fourth painting, thank you so much for coming back and I look forward to seeing what you guys paint. So today's video is perfect for my first time painters. These are great videos to just kind of get you comfortable with the brush, comfortable with mixing your paint, and the kind of the way these are set up, you're gonna do kind of a crazy abstract background. You are welcome to switch out colors if you want. Um, and then we'll use black paint and put a silhouette design on there. Um, and that kind of solidifies your composition. So again, this is excellent practice just to get comfortable with the process of painting and perfect for my first time and beginner painters. If you wanna do a different silhouette design, um, just Google uh, the subject matter and silhouette of what do you wanna do and feel free to switch it up and make the painting your own. Use this as just kind of a, a guideline, a step-by-step -step of what to do. Um, with that being said, in the description box below, you're gonna see a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit is everything that you need to grab, um, materials, paints, brushes, canvas, for this particular painting. So check out the supply kit, grab the materials that you need, and then pick up the video again. With practice, you get better and more comfortable. So keep on finding ways to have a creative outlet on a monthly basis. Your future self will be very grateful that you did. So uh, I think it's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. All right, guys, this is gonna be a fun painting, so make sure you get all your supplies, turn on your favorite music, and as always, take your progress photos. All right, so with this one, we're gonna be kind of doing an abstract background, so you are more than welcome to switch out colors. And for this one, I'm gonna be starting with light pink. So you start with white, add a small amount of red, <clears throat> to make the shade of pink that you want. All right, and again, just kind of starting in the middle. We're just kind of abstract painter right now, slapping some paint on there, kind of any shape that you want. I did want it to go a little bit lighter, so you saw where I grabbed some white and just started mixing that in with it. Um, as you do your background, I just want you to play, have fun. This does not have to be perfect, and you can switch up colors to whatever you want. And you can see where I grabbed some more of that red, just kind of played with it, slapped it on there. Again, I want you to let your inner five-year-old just get kind of wild and crazy. All right, so when you're done with the red, pause the video, take your progress photo, and then we're gonna be moving into light yellow. And again, that's gonna be white with yellow, kind of lemony yellow. And again, placing this where you want to put it or mimicking what you see on the video. And because we are doing this kind of fast, when it comes up to that red and that pink, I do want you to do a little bit of blending. And for this method, that means you, each color will overlap each other. And then you can kind of see how, with it being wet, it blends in and maybe pulls a little bit of that color into the other color. Just have fun. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. And I tell most of my students in my studio class that I want you to embrace your inner kindergartner. And just pretend like you're five years old, you're playing with color on your canvas, you're getting comfortable with moving your brush around and making your colors and blending. Just have fun. This is your escape from the world. So still making a little bit more of that light yellow color and placing it where you would like it on your background. And for my first time painters, make sure you're breathing and relaxing. Um, you're gonna be so focused on the canvas in front of you that you may start to hold your breath or you may actually start to forget about the world outside these four walls. That's a good thing, that part of forgetting about the rest of the world while you're painting. But don't take yourself too seriously as we do this. Um, 
Just have fun. Your brain's taking in a lot of information. You are learning a lot right now. So now's probably a good time. Pause the video, take your progress picture. Light orange, move into a shade of light orange. And that's gonna be white, little bit of yellow, little bit of orange to your liking. And again, just kind of playing with some warm colors in our background and overlapping some of our other shades. And like I said earlier, I don't want you taking a lot of time to do your background. I want you to kind of move into the next color so that way the paint is wet and you can do a little bit of blending. And again, your blending is what we call wet on wet blending to where you're overlapping one color already on your background with the new color that you're introducing with your brush. And because both are wet paint, it gives a nice kind of way to blend your colors. All right, another spot to pause the video and take a progress photo. If you need to go back to your pink, because maybe you realize you wanna put it in another color or another area, or maybe you need to intensify it more, go back to your pink or any of the colors you want. But you're basically gonna be kind of filling in any remaining canvas space uh, with your abstract background. If you want to go back to your red, if you want to introduce some blue or some purple or something else, go right ahead. You are an abstract artist right now, and it's a lot of fun. Enjoy it. There is something super therapeutic about just moving paint on canvas. And like I said earlier, your brain is taking in a lot of information right now. And again, add any of these colors, any other places that you want. Do anything you want to your background while your paint is still wet. That helps with the blending. But you can deviate completely from what I have on the screen. Do your own thing. And as I'm going back and blending, I am using light pressure with my brush. Um, play with the pressure as you're doing some blending just to find your comfort level. All right, you're gonna pause the video, take your progress photo, and I do want you to let your background dry completely before you move into your black paint and putting your butterfly on here, on your background. So we're gonna start with the body of our butterfly first, which is basically a line, and then we're gonna kind of fatten up that line. Give them a little bit of a head, though I think I actually chop off the butterfly head later on in the video, you'll see that. For the top wing, you're gonna start with kind of the shape of a heart. And this doesn't have to be perfect when you're doing your line, but just kind of get your base composition on there. And you're gonna start with one, do a heart, and then do the heart on the other side, and it will go off the edge of the canvas. And yeah, doing your heart on the other side, having part of that heart kind of reach off the canvas. So wherever you placed it on your canvas, we do something on one side of the butterfly and then do it on the other side. So we're doing that bottom um, wing. And again, on the left side, it just shoots off the side of the canvas. And going back, and if you need to kind of thicken up those lines or repaint, and then we're gonna move into the design of our butterfly on the inside of the wings. And this can be anything that you want. You can deviate from what I do on the screen. You can copy it exactly, um, but just kind of make the design yours on the inside. And again, you're getting comfortable with the pressure using that pointy brush going over your lines. And as you paint today, you're about two feet in front of your canvas. So as you go through the process, I'm gonna encourage that every now and then you get out of your chair, look at your painting from about three to 10 feet away, and just notice how it looks a little bit different from that distance. And that distance is the normal viewing distance for most things in life. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. And like I said earlier, we're gonna be doing the designs on the inside of our butterfly wings. And every butterfly is unique, so this does not have to be perfect. But I kind of recommend if you do something on one wing, switch over to the other wing and do the same thing and just kind of keep this back and forth um, 
aspect going. And that kind of helps keeps it a little bit more balanced as you are creating the design of your butterfly. But like I said, feel free to switch up the design, make it anything you want. If you want to put someone's name or your name inside the wings, if you want to do dots, you can look up henna designs, you can look up um, different line drawings, anything that you want. And if you, I do recommend doing this painting a couple of times. And each time that you do it, you get more comfortable and you get a little bit more confidence to maybe try something different or try a new design. So painting's never about being perfect, but it's about learning to step out of your comfort zone and see things, see the world from a new perspective. Again, remember to breathe. You're doing a great job. I'm proud of you for painting at home. All right, and as you're using the brush, um, kind of treating the brush like a pencil using just the tip of the brush helps a lot of my first time painters get comfortable with that pointy brush. So again, be kind to yourself as you're doing something new and going through the process and getting comfortable with the tools you are using. You'll be so amazed in a year from now, if you keep painting, um, just how much more comfortable and control you have over the brush, over your color mixing, over the things that you observe after painting um, with a lot of practice. And remember to take progress pictures randomly, um, just so that way you can go back and look and see how your painting changes as you add another element, as you add another color. Um, and again, you're just learning how your brain's interpreting things that you do. Pause the video, take another progress photo. And if you don't want to use black for all of your design, you are welcome to grab another color and add that um, into the design of your butterfly. After we do the background, we'll actually come back and work with the black again. So even there, if you want to switch out colors, go right ahead. But most of my videos on my channel are just a simple guideline you can use them as a guideline, but please deviate where you feel you want to and just have fun. Find your creative outlets as often as you can. And if you're not sure about something about a design, go ahead and give it a try. Um, if you're not sure if you wanna add something somewhere, add it, you may end up liking it. If you don't like it, you let your paint dry and you paint on top of it again. Um, so acrylic paint is a very versatile medium for my beginner and first time painters. And you can layer acrylic paint over and over and over again. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're going to go back up to that medium flat brush, and we're going to put our background in. Um, so this is going to be a light blue, white, with a touch of blue to the shade that you want. And basically from the edges of our butterfly to the edges of the canvas, we're going to be filling in that space with this medium to light blue color. Now if your black paint is dry, you can actually kind of reshape the perimeter, the edges of your butterfly if you need to. And as you'll notice a little bit later in the video, uh, I actually decapitate the butterfly, take off his head and its antenna, and we'll reapply it later. So if you happen to chop the head off of your butterfly or chop off a certain part, don't freak out. Just let your paint dry and go back and reapply um, the design or the color that you need. And here you can see in that top corner, 
I actually had a darker blue than compared to the lighter blue that I was using. If you make your color and it's a slightly different shade, kind of play with that. Having some diversity in your background is to your benefit. And then here I've got a little bit of a lighter blue. Don't, again, don't stress about it being the exact same shade everywhere. Even when we look at stuff in nature, it's never the exact same shade on the whole thing. There's, there's variety to it. And again, apply your paint a little bit thicker, especially if you're using student grade paint. And it will have a bit more opaque coverage on top of the background color and be much more fun and easier to work with as you move it across the canvas. Remember to breathe. Don't hold your breath. And here, yep, you can just see I just decided to take it off. If your black is not fully dry, like mine is there, just grab more of your white or your blue, paint on top of it a little bit thicker. You can take a paper towel and wipe off that kind of grayish color and then reapply your background. But just with acrylic paint, nothing's the end of the world. You just let it dry and paint on top of it again. And here you can see I grabbed some more of the blue, painting right on top of my lighter blue. Again, this is that wet on wet blending method. And do everything that you want to your sky, to the stuff on the outside of your butterfly while your paint is wet. It will help with your mixing. And a lot of times I tell my students, if you have anything that has irritated you this week, uh, throw it into your painting. We won't solve your problem, but you will feel a little bit better afterwards. So another spot to pause the video and take your progress photo. And now we're going to move back to the pointy brush and black paint and reapply anything that we need to for our design of our butterfly. If you're like me and decapitated your butterfly, um, reapply the head and the antenna. And I think here I even switched up the antenna, antennae. And we're going to go back to any of the designs, thicken up the perimeter. Um, if you want to switch out colors, make the design that you want. And then we'll be putting some white highlights uh, kind of randomly on here as our final step. All right, and here we're moving into white, just kind of putting some highlights on here. Again, totally your call. If you want to grab a different color like teal or red or blue, um, make the design anything that you want. And again, I'm so proud of you for painting at home, stepping outside your comfort zone. Um, I hope you found this video to be helpful and informative. And I hope it encourages you to continue to paint and find creative outlets in your world. You're doing a great job. And I encourage you to show your friends what you're painting and encourage them to paint at home. It is something nice about just being able to zone out into a painting, into one of those coloring books, and just kind of escape the world for a small amount of time. All right, guys, I'm super proud of you. Thanks again for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you feel a little more relaxed now at the end of painting compared to when you started. I'm really, really, really proud of you for painting at home, so uh, good job. Don't wait too long to do another painting and just kind of hone in the skills that you learned today. It will be more comfortable 
um, the next time that you go to paint. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me in those photos, paint with lovejoy, or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I'm a fully solo production here, so seeing your feedback, hearing your comments, um, really kind of gives me motivation to keep making these videos and it is growing really, really nicely. Um, when you are ready, I do have something that you can kind of uh, level up to. So I want you to check out my main website, paintwithlovejoy.com, and I feature my Paint Your Pet class, and it is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So check that out when you're ready to kind of take the next level of painting at home. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, things that you would like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment below. I do my best to respond to all of those pretty quickly. And like I said earlier, your feedback is definitely keeping me uh, going and keeping me make more videos. So it is your support that's making this happen. Um, so yeah, thanks again for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm honored, truly grateful that uh, you're finding a lot of help in these videos and enjoying the process of painting. So until next time, cheers. Yeah.